Okay, this video is going to be an introduction to the standard normal. And what's really important about the standard normal is first off, we're working with the normal curve. But with the standard normal, we will have used our Z score formula, Z equals X minus mu over sigma to convert um, whatever normal curve we have. Because remember, there can be an infinite number of means or an infinite number of standard deviations. And we're going to convert every single one of them to a z-score, which will be converting it to a standard normal. And when we do that, our new mean will be zero, our scaled mean will be a zero, and our standard deviation will be one. So if we have a z-score, or is what they call a standardized score, we're gonna have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. So if I said, oh, someone has a, I'm 1.2 standard deviations of the mean, oh, the mean was zero and the standard deviation was one, regardless what we're talking about. If um, I say, hey, my SAT score is two standard deviations above the mean, then you're like, oh, the mean was zero, the standard deviation is one. And, and they're like, no, that wasn't the SAT value. And it's not the SAT value, but it, that is the Z score or the standardized score mean. So for a z-score, mean is zero, standard deviation of one. That's always the case. Make a big star, don't forget it, because sometimes that trips people up. Okay, so one of the great things about the, um, um, stand, the normal curve is if we convert it to, a, to the standard normal, it basically follows this um, rule. 68% of the data falls between plus or minus one standard deviation. 95% is plus or minus two. 99.7 is plus or minus three. That is called the empirical rule. You need to memorize that. You need to know this, all right? Please note, z-scores can be calculated for any distribution. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't have to be normal. But the empirical rule and the percentages only apply to the normal distribution, right? Only apply the empirical rule or these percentages to the normal distribution. If it's not, we can't calculate them. Right, so because the normal distribution uh, follows uh, all have the same percentages, when we standardize them, we can use the empirical rule. So regardless what normal curve we're given, we can always use it. And here's what the the standard normal means: sixty eight percent of the data is within plus or minus one standard deviation. Ninety five is within plus or minus two, and ninety nine point seven is in plus or minus three. That means there's a little bitty bit out of the tails. Matter of fact, we can go one minus 0.997. We find out that there's 0.03 in the tails, but really it's actually even much smaller because we're dividing it by two. So in this tail, there's 0 0.0015. And in this tail, they're 0 0.0015. And together they make up that 0 0.03 that's left over. So very small percent out in the tails. Notice our greatest percentage is, is in the center, all right? We get smaller the farther we go out. So most of our scores are within negative one and positive one standard deviation. How much of our scores? 68%, all right? And we'll break that down here in the, later on in this video as to how that breaks out. Um, one other thing I should want to tell you, this, horizontal, this is essentially a number line. This will go to negative infinity standard deviations, and this will go to positive infinity standard deviations. So it runs from negative infinity to positive infinity, but the distance between is exactly the same, all right? It's just like a number line. So the difference between negative two and negative one is the same as between positive two and positive three. So the horizontal distances are exactly the same, okay? So if I want to maximize the number of scores, I'm gonna to wanna to be centered about the data. So let's take a contrived but simulated real life situation, all right? So it, the mean is always in this, oh, by the way, I should have said the mean is zero. And because it's a Z-score, the standard deviation is one. Well, when I look at this, it's like, hey, you know what? I don't see a mean of zero. I see in this case, a mean of 36. And I notice every individual difference is the same. And so I can pretty much say that the standard deviation for this particular thing is three. And that's true. However, they told us 
The ages of adults taking a course for the last years are normally distributed. Well, because they're normally distributed, I can use, I can use the standard normal uh, probabilities. And basically I can convert all of these with a z-score and make convert this so that I have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So let's do this in just a second. So it says 68% of the data, well, it needs to be between plus or minus one. So 68 needs to be between plus or minus 33 to 39, because this would be like saying this is negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and three standard deviations. And you're like, okay, but I'm not sure I believe you. And I go, that's fine. Because we can look at this and say our mean was 36 and our standard deviation was one. Well, we know I've said that I can scale with a Z score. So let's take 33. So Z equals 33 minus 36 divided by three. Because remember, my Z score formula is Z equals X minus mu over sigma. So I'm just using that formula where my mean is 36, my standard deviation is three, and 33 minus 36 gives me a negative three divided by three, and so I end up getting Z equals negative one. So this is negative one. Well, if this is negative one, then this is obviously gonna be positive one. If I come back and do 30, Z equals 30 minus 36 divided by three, so that's negative six divided by three, which gives me Z equals negative two. So basically that 30 maps to a negative two standard deviations and Z equals 27 minus 36 over three, which is negative nine, which tells me I have a Z equal to negative three standard deviations. So this is three standard deviations below, all right? And so this, obviously is three standard deviations above. So that's how I can use the scaling to the standard normal. And all normal curves will work like that. I can use the Z to convert it to an empirical rule. Notice I said all normal, they, got to, they have to be normal, otherwise I can't do that. So between, 30, uh, between 33 and 39, oh, that's between plus or minus one, that's 68%. Between 30 and 42, Oh, that's plus or minus two, that's 95%. And between plus or minus three is 99.7%. Okay, so um, one thing you have to be cautious of, percentages provided the, by the empirical rule are not percentile ranks. The percentile rank goes from negative infinity to some other value, all right? So negative infinity to another value. So if zero, happens to be at the 50th percentile. Why half the data is larger, half the data is smaller. So from negative infinity to here is 50% of the data. 100% of the data lies within negative one to positive one. But the empirical rule is just saying how far measured from the center. Well, plus or minus one is 68%. Now I'm gonna make a moment here, take a moment and relate these in just a second. Um, so a percentile rank provides us the amount of area or percent of data that's below a certain value. So 50% is below a certain value. Well, how much is below negative one? We know that between negative and one and one is 68%. And I'm gonna give you some rough estimates. And by the way, the, I have to say this, the empirical rule is an estimate. It's not an exact. Um, if we say someone is at one standard deviation, there's a calculation that I'm not gonna show you but the calculation is 84%, technically about 84.13% is below one standard deviation, all right? So I wanna go ahead and take a look at this real quickly and kind of spread this out. Now I'm gonna do this differently than I have in the past, all right? Uh, I used to have people use the empirical rule to make these estimates. Uh, I don't think that that's really worthwhile. I'd rather you get it. So I'm going to use this page a little differently. So the numbers that are um, pre-printed as answers, probably not the best thing. So suppose the ages of adults taking a business course for the last five years are normally distributed. Okay, I have to know that, and they will tell me that. Um, 
So because I know that, because I know they're normal, I can apply the empirical rule. So in this case, they're normally distributed. So 68% are between 33 and 39, 95 between 30 and 42, and 27 to 45 is 99.7%. Uh, well, I wanna look at this a little differently. As it turns out, this little area right here from negative infinity to that bar is about 0 0.0015, okay? Well, if that's the case, this bar to infinity is also 0 0.0015. So going to infinity, positive infinity, this is 0 0.0015. Between these two bars ends up being 0 0.00235. Excuse me, I said that wrong. 0 0.0235, which also means because it's symmetric, this is also 0 0.0235. So 2%, about 2% of my data is here. All right. Between um, 30 and 33 is 0.135%. And this also means this is also 0.135%, approximately, it's not exactly. And then from 33 to 36, well, we know that this was 68%, so this is half of it, which is 0.34. And this is 0.34. So that's the percentages, and I was just using the empirical rule to figure that out. However, what would the percentile ranks be? Well, the percentile rank for this one is just what they had, so 0 0.0015. And then if I add these two together, I find the percentile rank right here as being 0 0.025. And then I have to add 0.135 to that. So 0 0.025 plus 0 0.135, and I end up getting 16%. So right here, this value right here is at the 16th percentile. This right here is at the 50th percentile, half is bigger, half is larger. Well, I'm adding 34 to that. When I add 34, this is at the 84th percentile. And these are approximates, but they're really close, all right? I add 13 and a half to that, and I get to the 97.5 percentile. I add to that, and this becomes 0.985. And then ultimately, if I go all the way out to positive infinity, which I actually 9985, excuse me, 9985. If I ultimately, if I add the last part, I get to one whole. So if I add 0 0.0015 to this, but we never get to infinity, so that's theoretical. So what does that mean? At negative three standard deviations, 0.15% is below you, not very much. If I'm at negative two standard deviations, two and a half percent of the population is below me. If I'm at negative one, 16% of the population is below me. I'm at, if I'm at the mean, half the population is below me. If I'm at one standard deviation above, 84% of the population is below me. If I'm at two standard deviations, 97% is below me, 97.5%. And if I'm at three standard deviations above the mean, because I'm a superstar, I said so, 99.85% of the population is below me. Okay, and that's what I would like you to take away from this page and kind of ignore the rest of it. Okay, all right, thank you for watching.